Hi, and welcome to this demo of the new features introduced instead of Mario Extension Pack 4, Update 13. The first noticeable change will happen immediately on startup. You will see a splash screen for My Extension Pack that will list all the relevant changes of each update. And you can also access the full release notes, the online help, etc. You can obviously turn this off so you don't always have to see it. And you can relaunch it via the help menu extension pack splash screen option. The first big new feature is the ability to finally control your environment light rotation directly in the viewport without having to go to the light palette. The hotkeys used for this are shift and arrow left and right for a slow rotation, just arrow left and right for a medium fast rotation, and alt left and right arrow for a fast rotation. You can control the increments of the rotation by the edit preferences, miscellaneous section, and in here we have the new environment lights options for slow rotation degrees, medium rotation degrees, and fast rotation degrees. So if I set, for example, the fast rotation degrees to 90, now if I press Alt and arrow keys, you'll see the environment light rotates in 90 degrees inc increments. You can change the hotkeys at any time by going to the shortcuts editor, My Extension Pack, in here we have the light subsection, and here you can map your own hotkeys. In the node graph, a new node has been introduced to compare two different inputs. If I go to my node graph, nodes, layer, extension pack, we have the new node called AB wipe. And if I just create some radio nodes and hook those up to something and view the output, you can see already I have both my inputs displayed at the same time. And if I check the node properties of the AB wipe node, you can see I can control a wipe and reverse the wipe. This is very similar to what is happening in the preview options of the color range to mask node. So it meaning that the wipe is controlled by the paint buffer. So if I move my paint buffer, you can see the wipe is moving with it. One thing to note is obviously this effect will actually be baked down so you should never leave this node in here like this. Leave it, if you actually use it in a node stream, leave it either at zero or one, or just use it as an additional node stream to quickly compare stuff and not have it in a bakeable channel. Next, we have some changes to the image node and the image array node. So if I go to my node graph and create an image node, and let me just load a texture for this and drag this in here and view the output. So you can see I have a tileable image applied now. And if I create a manifold UV node, hook this up, you can use the manifold UV node to change the tiling. So this is all pretty much as it was before. If I check the image node, we now have a new subsection called tiling mode. So before in the previous updates of extension pack, we had here a checkbox called stencil. This has been replaced with the new dropdown for tiling where you can now set a specific tiling mode. So the previous stencil mode is now called no tiling. So you can see I have a blank image now because this is UDIM 1001 and you can see we have the place in UDIM 1001. If I set this to 1002, now I have one instance of that image appearing in UDIM 1002. In addition, we now also have the option to specify a tiling mode in just one direction. So for example, if I set it to U, you can see it's tiling in just this one UDIM. There's a little bit of an overlap here, so this is why it's not being used here. So this actually sits in another UDIM. And we can cover this area as well if I say in UDIM, in UDIM range. So now basically, if you were to have more UDIMs here, this image would tile all across these different UDIMs in this one row. Same thing for V. So if I set it to V, I have it repeating in V just in this one UDIM that is specified here. So if I move this to 12, now it's up here. And I can also have a tile in the entire UDIM range for the entire column. So if I set this to column, now it's tiling all across. These new options are only available in new instances of this image node. So in previous versions of your projects where you're already using an image node, 
you will not have these updated features. These same options have been added to the array node as well. Let me do this. So if I check the array node, down here we have these same options. The access projection and access projection array nodes have also had some updates made. So let's create an access projection. And let's load an image. So some nice strips. By the way, these are all these different grunge maps are available as part of another one of my products. So if you want to buy those, feel free to do so. So let's load in the drips here and change the tiling a little bit so you see something. And let's turn the top projection off. And this is what you would have by default in previous versions. And we can see under the general section, some changes have been made compared to previous versions of this node. So the previous stencil option, same as in the image node has disappeared and we now have control over the tiling. So by default, the U and V are active. If I want the old stencil option, I set it to no tiling and we get one instance of the node of the image applied. I can also set it now to just U. So I have a tiling in just the U direction or just V. Under the UV transform, there have also been some new additions, so we now have a new alignment. By default, this is set to center, meaning that the projection will try to align based around the center of your, of your object. You can also set this to top, for example, and you see these drips nicely snap to the bounding box of the object. So that's a very useful little trick to quickly align something like this to the top of an object. Obviously, it's very convenient here that this is a completely flat object, but it might be useful for some cases. You can also set it to bottom, which in this case will make it disappear because basically the drips will now go down. So if I apply an offset, you can see I can move this up here. So if it, your image ever disappeared, that's probably why? Because your alignments are set in a way that are not working well with your current object shape. Same options have been applied to the access projection array node. So if we look at that node, we have under the V transform the alignment and under the general section, the tiling options.